love for us, for all of us. You know, God is a God of love, and he, He's been good to all of us. Hopefully, everybody can see it. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you. He's been good. He's very good, very gracious, and plenty in mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. All right. Thank the Lord. Just Reflect on who's here with us today. God is with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's been so good to us. You know, this, the saying is that he's been better to me than I've been to myself hallelujah I don't always treat myself the way that he desires but he's faithful he's been so good God is something and you promised that if God would bring you out with praises you would praise him the song says I I'll praise his name don't forget now the trial that he brought you through I said I would praise his name oh yes I will I'll praise his name because he's been so good. He's so good to me. Join me and let's sing that verse again. God is so good. God is so so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to Hallelujah. God is so good. And if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to the book of St. John, 
chapter 15. St. John 15. Are you ready? Yeah. We're going to read 17 verses, reading responsibly, beginning at verse 1. The word of God says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be, might be full. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. And together... These things I command you that you love one another. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. For we know that your word is life and it's spirit and it brings hope. It brings healing to our lives. Lord, you said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we are here, Lord God, to partake of your word today. Let it bring strength and let it feed our hearts, Lord God. We need you, Lord, for survival. We need you for sustenance. We need you, Lord, for provision. We need you for hope, for encouragement. We need you for guidance, Lord, protection, security. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit take full control now. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. What the Lord placed upon my heart today was a path, I'm sorry, a deeper life. A deeper life. And uh, as I waited in the presence of the Lord, this is what he spoke to me and he gave quite a bit of uh, information concerning a deeper life and uh, I just wrote as I was listening to him and uh, normally when God chooses to do it that way I just write it down and try to uh, find out what scriptures is best uh, saying what he's saying and 
so the things that he was sharing, I believe this passage of scripture best uh, says what he was saying to me. For us, for the body, a deeper life. This is the call of God for us now, the call for a deeper life. You and I know that we're living in times where people's hearts are failing them, people are falling away from the faith, and commitment seems to be a dirty word. But in the midst of this, God has always had a people, a people that would be committed to his cause. Uh, when Elijah thought that he was the only one, God told him, I have reserved 7,000 that has not bowed the knee to Baal. I want you to look at somebody and say, God will always have a remnant. To protect his divine purpose. But he gives us an opportunity, thank God, to be a part of that remnant. I'm so glad. As I was thinking about it, he sort of brought my attention to several uh, passages of scriptures that uh, gave choices to humanity. First was in Psalms, talks about two ways in life, uh, the godly as opposed to the ungodly. And then as we look at Matthews chapter 6, verses 24 to 34, he talks about two masters. He said, you cannot serve two masters. The capacity that we all have is to be loyal to one and get frustrated and hate the other. So whatever one you're loyal to, then you're going to detest the other one trying to pull on you. You have to hear what I'm saying. That's what God implied. He said you can't serve two. Either you'll be loyal to one and hate the other one, or you'll cling to one and despise the other. Just know how we're made up. We're made up to serve something higher. And that spot is, to, is reserved for only God. And so when another idol come and vie for our attention, it's going to bring a lot of frustration. Because we're made for him. Then uh, not only does Matthew talk about two masters, and, but Matthew 7, chapter, I mean, verse 13 through 20, it talks about two gates, straight and narrow, and the broad road that leads to destruction. Two gates. And Matthew 7, 24 through 27 talked about two builders, a wise master builder and an unwise master builder. But there's choices in life. Look at somebody who said there are choices in life. Choices to live for God or choices to live for the devil. Isn't that right? There was one called... Joshua, he said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So he talks about the choices there. And when we, you and I, have made the choice to serve God. Look at somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Now, in the midst of making the choice to serve God as opposed to serving Satan, there is a path to a deeper life. Uh, so uh, this is what I want to talk about, a deeper life. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say about the deeper life, I want to talk about the path that leads to a deeper life. The second part is the purity of a deeper life. And thirdly, I want to talk about the purpose of a deeper life. A deeper life. Would you say that with me? A deeper life. A deeper life. So the first thing we'll speak briefly of is the path to a deeper life. Deeper meaning extending far down from the top or from the surface. There's a surface life where we look like Christians. 
on the outside, on the exterior, but on the inside, there's a different story. Uh, we have just a form of God, but here he's calling us to a deeper life, a life uh, where the roots go deep into the soil of God's love. Are you hearing me? And so uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples when he was telling them about the parable of the sower and the seed. Anybody remember that? As he was talking about the seed, the sower, he called attention to his disciples to pay attention to the, the seed itself and the ground that it fell on. You see, it's the seed that produces the kind of life that God is looking for. It is the divine seed because in that seed, as we've said before, is the divine life. And as we take in the seed, it will ultimately produce godliness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the fruit is in the seed. The seed is from the Lord. And he, when God made creation, he made everything in his image. He made a tree that could bear fruit and the seed would be after its own kind. So you can take an apple and open that apple up and you can find seeds. And if you take those seeds, dry them out, put them in the ground, then all of a sudden a tree will come up and that tree is the exact image of that apple tree that dropped those apples on you. Same way with God. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So the purposes of God has to do with creating man in his own image and likeness, an exact replica. So when people see humanity, they must see God. They must see an image and a likeness of the creator who is invisible. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? This is God's intent. So the path of a deeper life is important to us and is important to God. He doesn't want us to be shallow Christians. Amen. Christians that you, 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 you can rejoice in the sanctuary, but the trials come day by day and so there's sadness and gloom and despair and frustrations and, and loose speaking and all of those things. So uh, God does not want the shallow Christian because they can't exactly represent him for what he's called them to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so God says, I'm calling for my church everywhere at large to grow deeper now in the soil of God's nature and his love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The path of, to a deeper life, the path that leads to a deeper life is important. And I heard him say when I was uh, looking into the word, he said um, the key thing in the, in, in, in the path of a deeper life is you learn to focus. You must focus on what's more important. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, there's, there's, there's a, there, it is extremely important that we have an aim in life. In, in all the sports, when you, there, there's an aim. There, there, there's an aim behind the whole thing. There's a purpose. Isn't that right? And all that you see there, you, there's a basketball, uh, and they have a goal, something to aim at. Isn't that right? There's football in the same, um, and you got it. You can name it, but the purpose is that the, 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 there's a goal in mind, but you take away the goal and you frustrate the, 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 the game. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They can just go around in circles and run, but there's, there's no real purpose. So they reach no goal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The same way in the Christian life. When God calls us, he calls us with purpose in mind. And so the first thing in discovering, going deeper in God is 
focusing, having an aim, understanding our purpose, understanding that we are called to be fruit bearers. All right? We're called as trees of righteousness. And trees have a purpose. Every fruit tree has a purpose to bear the fruit of its kind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God calls us trees. And the fruit tree, the fruit that we are to bear, according to Isaiah 61, is righteousness. Are you hearing me? Righteousness, right living, righteousness, right doing, right character. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? We are called to this. This is the aim, so we must have that understanding what we're called to. So the path is first understanding the aim. If we're going to reach a goal, we must understand that there's a goal in mind. And that goal is ordained by God. It's not a man-made goal. It's a goal ordained by God who brought us out of darkness into light. Are you hearing me? So we must focus on the word of God. All right. So, and what, what I, I, not only did he say focus, learn to focus, have an aim, have a goal have an intent and a purpose. In other words, when I came into this faith and began to understand that I'm supposed to live for God, then that was my aim. Are you hearing me? I'm not to live for people. I'm to live for God. So that, because one day I'm going to meet him. And when I meet him, if I have lived for you and haven't lived for God, then when I stand before God, he's going to say, well, I never really knew you. So I must develop a relationship with God down here. Anybody hearing what I'm saying? This is what matter in life as a Christian. You and I must develop a relationship with the, 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 the God of our salvation, with the God that you cannot see with your natural eye. We must be able to focus on him and to develop a relationship of vibrant, vital relationship with God. Yes. Nothing else will do, saints. So as we look and focus in on him, let me, let me see, show you what the word says in Matthew 13 right fast. Uh, if I find, if I feel like I'm energetic, I got a lot of energy here from the Holy Spirit today. He said, when you get up the, there, he said, say, Holy Spirit, take control. So I've just asked him to take control. Hallelujah. All right, so the, the path The road to a deeper life. If you're going to go deeper, you have to be on the road to the deeper life. Isn't that right? That was what he said in Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Okay, verse 5, it says... Uh, Verse four, and when he sowed, let me go back. Let me go from the beginning. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he went into a ship and sat and a whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things to them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some fell by the wayside. The fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell among upon th stony ground, stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And, listen to this, and when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had what? No root, they withered away. Somebody say, hear what the Lord is saying. Now, let's look at verse 18. He's, he's, he goes to explain this one. Verse 18, chapter 13. Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the soul. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom 
and understand it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hear the word and anon with joy receives it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by, he's offended. Everybody with me? This Christian life is not an easy life. This Christian life is the best thing that can happen to a human being, but it's not an easy life. And so now here is what he's pointing out here. If the path to a deeper life, a life that's deeper, extending beyond surface, or a relationship extending beyond surface, is a relationship that uh, the intimacy is there between a person and God. That person gets to know God much better through a relationship and through the word of the Lord. The word of God is that which uh, as we eat it on a regular basis and meditate on it, that word, the, the truth, the faith will, will grow deeper into the soil of God's love. For God is love. Who dwells in, whoever dwells in love, they dwell in God. So all of a sudden, the, the, because the, 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 the nutrients that are given by Jesus, we are heavy, or I don't want to use the word heavy, but deeper into the life of God, God provides. So we're always being nourished by the Lord. No matter what days pass by, we're being nourished by the nutrients that comes from Jesus Christ. And because we are being nourished on a regular basis, when things are withering away, then we are shining brighter and brighter for the Lord. Jesus talks about him being the water of life. Now, you give me an example. I remember uh, there was this man. He, our neighbor had a lawn. And during the summer, it was pretty, pretty um, hot. And so rain was, didn't come every week. And people would fertilize the lawn and sometimes... Uh, they didn't, but they, because there was no rain, not sufficient rain, the ground got hard and dry, and so now the 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 grass needed nutrients. It needed water to remain green, fertilizer made to help it to get green uh, um, with plenty of water, but it had to re keep a lot of water going in order for it to remain green. I had this neighbor, my, in fact, my neighbor that was right beside, lived right beside me. My lawn was between green and brown. His lawn was as green as can be. So I kept looking at my neighbor's lawn, and I didn't really see, I, every now and then I'd see him watering, but I said, now what is he doing to his lawn? Because everybody else's lawn is just dry. So one day, curiosity got the best of my wife, so she asked him. She said, uh, well, what are you doing to keep your lawn green? He said, I water it three times a day. So he was getting three times or four times the water that the average lawn was getting. God is like that. If you want to be happy and have a good relationship with God, you're going to have to let your roots go deep. You, 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 you can't pray when you feel like it. You, you can't get into this word whenever there's a good opportunity because let me tell you something, the devil will make sure you never get an opportunity if you leave it up to him. Oh, you got to hear what I'm saying here. I done lived this thing 40 years. I know what I'm saying. The devil will fight you tooth and nails because he has no interest in you growing. And if he has his way, he's going to stop you every time you try it. Yeah. 
But let me tell you what's good. You've got to have a determination. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard one man say, this, this, this warfare is not for, for weak people. You learn to fight. And when you learn to fight, hallelujah, when you see what your weapons are, you see what God has done, oh, you can stand. And you can put him to flight. See, see, he, he, let me tell you something about the devil. The devil, he goes around here bluffing. See, he want to make you think he's so bad. Now, 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 if you, if you think that he's so bad, how many people want to go up against him, something real bad? People don't want to be bothered with something that's tough and bad, right? But the Bible says he goes about as a roaring lion. But he's not the lion. He's not the lion. There's only one lion. And that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't believe he's bad? You come before his presence with singing. Lift your hands and glorify the Lord and begin to remind him how good he is and how mighty he is and how powerful he is. And, and all of a sudden, God feel right at home coming your way. Hallelujah. And healing is in his wing. Life is in his wing. When he comes your way, hallelujah, then your devil, your enemy, the devil, all of a sudden he's got to take flight now because he looks around and see your help coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something, and I know what I'm talking about. Jesus is the baddest thing alive. Ain't nothing can come near him. Hallelujah. You remember when we went across the water to a man of Gadara? He had done scared the whole city. They were scared to see him coming. Sitting on the other side, guarding his turf. Nobody dared go to him. But I want you to know Jesus went there. Hallelujah. Oh, I love talking about Jesus. He went over there to this man and he rushes out there. What have I to do with you, you Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus said, shut up and come out of him. My God, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God, no demons scared Jesus. And Jesus, so he got scared. He saw that he's dealing with God. And Jesus said, what's your name? He said, my, my name is leading because we many. He said, if, 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 you, if you, would you, would you kind of, don't, you know, don't, don't throw us out of the country. But no, he's a bad man. You know, he's pleading now. You see, when, when God started to put pressure on demons, they started pleading. So you find they weren't tough anyway. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you see, you got to get into that zone where you understand that about God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> My God. Hallelujah. You focus on God and the word. Hallelujah. And then he says, there has to be a decision to move from, if you feel like you're a vessel of dishonor, you must be willing to move from a vessel of dishonor to a vessel of honor. Paul told Timothy, he said in a great house, there are vessels of gold and vessels of silver and vessels to honor and vessels to dishonor. You see in a great house, the, uh, you know, the, the owner of the house, he has some vessels that just, you know, just mundane use. They, you know, they just use them and, and those, but, but then there are vessels of honor. Vessels reserved for special use special use of the master when they bring in their special royal guests um, and they want to show off what they got um, and then they pull out that silver and they pull out their best um, and, and, and Paul was saying if you, if you, if you want to become a vessel to honor you can move from a vessel to dishonor to a vessel of honor but you have to bring purify yourself isn't that right um, hallelujah then you become a vessel fit 
for the master's use. Hallelujah. So there has to be an aim, a purpose and a goal that says, you know what? I, I'm not satisfied with my life. I'm in and out and I'm frustrated to half the time I'm sad. I, I can't enjoy my Christian life. Look like the devil is winning half the time. Then you want your soil to grow deeper. Your heart, your life to grow deeper in the soil of God's power and love. Um, get down on your knees and pray. Um, don't leave it by chance. Um, but make it a goal every day of your life. Um, come before his presence um, with singing. Um, know that he's God. Um, hallelujah. And when you go to pray, don't go praying trying to win a victory. You already have the victory. You already have the victory because of what Jesus has done. So you don't come sheepishly afraid into the presence of God. But Peter says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. You don't have to come embarrassed, come afraid, come guilty, none of that stuff. You come with confidence and boldness because the way has been made. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Purpose in your heart, hallelujah. I want to become a vessel of honor fit for the master's use. Glory to God. Then you must be willing to move from a selfish way of thinking to an unselfish way of thinking. Because everything about God is unselfish. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to sacrifice when you don't want to sacrifice. Can I tell you something? I remember saying to, feeling spiritual and saying to God, God, I want to win a soul every, every week. So I said, okay, this day I want to win a soul. God guide me. So I got there and I was so hungry before by the evening in, I sat down to eat and I was really diving. Somebody and the phone rang and somebody wanted to talk and they wanted some help. So now I'm saying, uh, it's like the Lord said, I want to see how much you really do want that. You, 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 you're trying to fool me. You, 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 you're saying you want to win souls and then I give you an opportunity and you don't want to put your plate down and say, put the food back for a minute. It ain't going to go nowhere. Talk to this. Am I talking to somebody here? <laughs> One of the things that I found out about the Lord, he may inconvenient you a little bit just to see how serious you are. Look at somebody say, prove faithful now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the path to the deeper life is so important. It's a way. And, 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 and let, let, me, let, me, let me go on to Matthew 7 here. I want you to see this. This is... Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that lead to destruction. Many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life and few there be that find it. Uh, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? The path to a deeper life is not the broad way. It's not the popular thing. Uh, everybody's not doing that. Hallelujah. If you're into what you're doing and everybody's doing it, you might want to check yourself a little bit here and see if you are going in the straight and narrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The believer's life is to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Fruit will be seen in the believer's character, in, in good works, and in helpful service to others. You want to follow Jesus closely. You want to follow him closely, then you must know that the gate or the road that leads to the 
little narrow gate is not something that you can just find it so easy. It may take a little determination on your part. It may take a commitment. You know, when people were looking for gold, you didn't have to tell them that they need to be committed to it. They wanted gold. If they needed to move, they moved out west where they heard go was. When you want something, you must know there's a price. I used to hear my parents say, anything that comes easy, it's not worth having. Hallelujah. You want to get close to God, right? Then there's a little cost to it. Hallelujah. Sometimes people will talk about you. When you, when you want to get close to God, people won't understand you. They'll, they'll try to try to tell you, you know, it, it don't take all that. And they, 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 when you're trying to get closer to God, now you're going to get some flack from somebody. Amen. But you must make the decision in your mind, that's what I want. And I'm going after it. God will be there for you. Hallelujah. Ain't that right? He says, the gate or the road that leads to life is neither obvious nor the natural way to live. It requires obedience from God. Sometimes God gives you something and it may not necessarily be pleasant. But if you know it's God, then do it. Isn't that right? All right. So he uses here gates, fruits, and buildings. They're all metaphors used in this section to distinguish between true and false discipleship. True discipleship enters by the narrow gate. It produces good fruit and build people's lives are built on the rock which is the wisdom derived from the words of Jesus. Jesus was saying in that passage, this passage, the life of a disciple is not easy, but it's immensely rewarding and is ultimately the only way. See, so you, we, we, it's like I have to make up my mind I want to draw closer. Isn't that right? You, you have to make up in your mind you want to draw closer to God and, and, and know that this is the right thing to do. Hallelujah. So the path has to do with is that what you want? Deciding whether I'm going to be a vessel of honor, whether I want to live a self-centered life or a life that's other-centered. Focus. I need to focus and aim. I need to see a good purpose behind it. The aim of every Christian life is to bear fruit. All right? This is the aim of every Christian. This is God's goal for, uh, for his people to bear fruit. And Galatians 5 talks about the fruit. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and faith. Now, what he was really saying is that these fruits are born by the Spirit of God, right? They come by the Spirit. So that means that, that in order to bear those fruit, it's going to take maturity, growth and maturity. Are you hearing me? Uh, how many have you ever seen a tree, a, a tree that is full-grown, but it still wasn't time for it to bear fruit. It wasn't mature. And so uh, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, it was like this fig tree was hypocritical. It looked like it was, it should have some fruit. And so it has no purpose. So he just cursed it. So the disciples were like, Lord, he said, why are, you cumbering, why are you cumbering the ground? Die. So fruit bearing, now look, God's not going to kill you, so please, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm making a point that God loves and our goal is to bear fruit as trees of righteousness. And the fruit is righteous fruit right fruits born by the holy spirit 
love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, and faith. Those fruit, now, 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 you know, you've seen apple trees and pear trees and all those trees. Everybody loves a tree that's just full of fruit. Oh, my God, look at those fruits. Same way with Jesus. Same way with Jesus. He says, here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. God wants us to love. He wants us to be joyful. He wants us to be patient with one another. He wants us to forgive one another. These are fruits born by the Spirit. Now, can I say this? Please don't throw rocks at me at this point. You, we have to grow in order to bear the fruit. They come by the Spirit. So you say, well, if we come by the Spirit, then why do we got to grow? Because there's a lot of selfishness in us. There's a lot of ways that's just contrary to God, right? And so the more we grow is the more we learn to yield our will over to God, right? See, and, 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 and to discern what's good. When Satan comes and he comes, he want to give you a word to, make your sp to fight your spouse or fight your friend. And if you don't discern where it's coming from, you say, this came to me and I said it. Well, when you said it, look at the fruit. The fruit will tell you the source. Because the fruit of the Spirit. When, you, when I'm yielding to the Spirit, the fruit that it bears is going to fall in the line of what he mentions in Galatians. But if I'm yielding to the devil of my flesh, it's going to fall in the line of Galatians too. As the works of the flesh. <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? I'm giving you a pattern that we must live by. Yeah, we're saved, but we must grow to the point where we understand how to yield to God fully so that he can bear fruit. Well, what do you mean? You remember the, the gentleman that preached some time ago and he shared when a man did him wrong, like they got him fired. And it was, as a matter of fact, it was Daryl's uncle. And that word really spoke to my heart. But he came and shared how the man nearly got him fired. And he said he was, and prior to that, he had such a good relationship with his boss. Man, he got so mad. And he, brood, he uh, just thought on that anger and thought on it until he got mad enough to kill him. And he told the Lord, he said, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I'm, I'm going to kill him. And so this is his testimony. And he said, the Lord said, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. In other words, I'm not going to do nothing if you got that mindset. <laughs> so he got the message. He had to give up that mindset. You see, saints, if we're going to grow, there's certain mindsets we got to let, let go. They are unhealthy to product, productivity. They are unhealthy to spiritual growth. And, and when you see those mindsets are like that, you have to get rid of those mindsets. Come to God and say, God, please, I need your help. I need your help. And God will help you. I can tell you situations where I went through. And um, one was several years ago, but I, I, I had an attitude. I felt this was right, and I wasn't going to give it up, man. I was, God was, I was, God was like, okay. He said, uh, he gave me what to do, and so, but I didn't want to give that thing up, buddy. I mean, I, I didn't want to give it up. You hear what I'm saying? And I'd never been challenged like that. I was like, wow. And so, it went on for a few weeks, and God said, he said, now, you don't want to be stiff naked. I said, ooh, ooh, that, look, that don't sound too good. So <laughs> then I had to start working on my attitude. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, y'all say, oh, pastor don't go through nothing. Oh, I done been through it, brother. That's why I'm telling you, hallelujah. <laughs> it's not healthy to sulk in a bad attitude. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me tell you how the devil does. If you if you got a bad attitude and you keep it long, and, and you over there, 
Oh, oh, oh. Daddy called him Slewfoot. He coming over here. What he's saying is, oh, that looks good to me. Well, you know, just look at this attitude here, you know. And the next thing you know it, he's in your stuff. Isn't that right? <laughs> and now you got to pray, you got to fast, you got to fast to get him out of your stuff. Isn't that right? <laughs> when all of that could have been avoided. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What well, a path to a deeper life. Hallelujah. You get that. Two or three times a day, take a little moment and says, that word, God, I want to go deeper. Matthew or whatever, get a scripture that's focused on it, meditate on it. Every time you think, thinking on that scripture, the next thing you know, that stuff will become a part of you. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, it starts to bear fruit. That thing, don't, that attitude is gone. It doesn't bother you anymore because you chose what the Lord said, the truth. He said, I need truth in the inward parts. I need truth where people can't see your heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so that word will put truth in the inward parts. And that's why it's important. Now, the, not only the path to a deeper life, but the purity of a deeper life. Purity. Freedom from adulteration or contamination. Morally pure. Purity of a deeper life. God said to me, he said, I want to heal the soul, people's soul, heal the, I want to heal people's body, soul, and spirit. That's what I came to do. That's what I want to do. And he that followeth me will come after me. Let him first. Then I am self and Take up his cross and follow me. The cross is a symbol of suffering and shame. Hallelujah. My God, sometimes I feel like I don't want no cross, don't want no burden, don't want none of that. But it don't always happen like that. Hallelujah. If I, but I want to be a disciple. You hear what I'm saying? I, I, if I want to be a disciple, then I got to count the cost. That's what God says. If you, you want to be my disciple, you got to count the cost. It's not an easy road. Hallelujah. It's not a fly by night. It ain't going to happen overnight. You got to put some time in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to put some time in. If you want to be a true disciple of God, and bear the fruit. Hallelujah. Pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. But they shall see God. He that will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And he said, we need to learn how to yield more to the spirit of God. Learning how to apply God's truth to our lives. We're still talking purity, okay? This is what he said, learning how to apply God's truth to our lives. Okay? Hallelujah. I guess worry, for example, worry. Worry is one of those things that people do it all the time, right? I heard one Christian say, I mean, you got to worry. I mean, who is, it? Who is he that can, don't, they don't have to worry? That's what, that was their whole mindset. Everybody's going to worry. Well, I mean, God said, don't worry. Isn't that right? So I choose to agree with God, right? So he says, learning how to apply God's truths to our lives against worry, against fears and anxieties. Casting all your cares on him, right? Yeah. Learning how to control our speech, he said, yeah. especially under pressure. Oh, my God. And then he brought to me how Jesus, it's like he said, the real, the real content of a person is seen during trials. So, so if I feel, if I tell you, oh man, I'm spiritual, I feel like a spiritual giant and so on, and next week you see me going through a trial and look like I'm under the, I'm, I'm under the, under the load and don't want to talk to nobody, don't want nobody to talk to me. There ain't no victory in that. Isn't that right? So if I face a trial, if you face a trial, that trial is going to show you what you got. Somebody said, I don't like this old preaching like that. I hate that. 
I'm trying to tell you the truth. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's not a lie that make you feel good. It's truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah, we're talking purity. He said, learning how to apply God's word. How do I apply God's word when I'm worried? How do I, you know, I remember this experience that I had in glory and with the body. God, he said, okay. He said, y'all, y'all, the body needs to learn to cast their cares over on God. Peter said, casting, he said, cast, submit yourself to God, casting all your anxieties, all your worries, all your fears, cast, roll them over on God, he says. So I thought, oh God, how can I do that? He said, just do it. So I says, uh, okay, Lord, just, I just roll these cares over on you. And I said, ask you to give me peace. And instantly the Holy Ghost came and just took it up like, oh, wow. So th that's how you do it. Oh, but I thought I had to work and carry on and pray and, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you know, sometimes we make things hard. Isn't that right? I got a, we got a work mentality. You know, everything's got to be work, 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 work. And God, it's like God said, it's grace. Favor. I've given you favor. Ask and you shall receive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We learn how to apply his word. Hallelujah. So if there's, not, if there's something that's in us that makes us not be able to control our speech, then you take it to God. We must take it to God, right? God, I got this little problem here. I need some help here. But don't just, don't just keep it there and act like I don't care. Isn't that right? Okay, s settle down here, Larry. Do it me. But the Lord wants us to be conscious of things that are not healthy and be Sure that he wants to help us more than we want to help. Isn't that right? He is the source of all of our need. Oh, my God. I, I found myself repeating myself in certain things that happened to me. My God, I remember one time I was gripped with fear. I, couldn't, I was literally paralyzed with it, and, uh, but it was all in my mind. And so I went to God, fell on my face, crying out, just bawling. God, I, couldn't, I had to face somebody and face the company. And I thought I had done something that might get me fired. So uh, I went home and prayed. And I laid there and wept. And all of a sudden, he just took that little fear. like this. There was such a peace. I said, oh, my God. Saints, God can do anything. I mean anything. That's why he said, is anything too hard for God? God can do anything but we must come to him. Isn't that right? We must cast our cares on him, ask, and you shall receive. He said, what father is it that if his son go and ask him for a fish, is he going to give him a snake in the place of it? He said, if your father being good or evil and know how to give good gifts, how much more will your father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to those that ask him? Look at somebody say, just ask him in faith. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. If you abide in, in him, the pathway to a deeper life, abiding, abiding, dwelling in him, maintaining that sense of fellowship and listening when he pray, learning, just, just learning to obey the simple things that when he tells us. Isn't that right? You know, son, you can't be waiting to try to move a mountain if you, you won't get up and pray when he tell you to get up and pray. Now, I mean, come on now. Isn't that right? It's first things first. I know everybody's not here when I'm aware, but I'm just making a point. When God tells you to, let's say God say, just call so-and-so and pray for him. No, I don't think that. They probably ain't. Just, just little stuff. Do what he says. Come on, y'all. Just do what he says. And you'll begin to see the fruit growing and growing, growing. And the more you start growing, the more you're going to face things. 
I slipped that in. You didn't, you didn't. <laughs> because there's always the pruning, right? Yes, God is happy. Sometimes he's pruning and you may feel like God is mad, but God just is happy. He's happy because he's happy because you're allowing him to prune you. He's really happy, honestly. And he'll go and boast and brag on you. You may be kicking and fussing <laughs> because you may not understand, but God is actually boasting and bragging because he said, they allowed me. They're allowing me. It's painful but they're allowing me and I appreciate that and that's the truth about God purity God Paul said I pray your body, whole body soul and spirit be preserved blameless to the day of judgment First John 3 says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doesn't appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we'll be like him. We're going to see him as he is. And everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself. The thought is, Lord, I want to be ready when you come. I want to be ready when you come. I don't know when you come coming, but I just want to be ready. Amen. Okay. Finally. Finally. The purpose. The purpose is to bear fruit. First John 15. St. John, yes. St. John, I'm sorry. Thank you, St. John. St. John 15, verse 4. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I'm the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. Men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. This is the goal. Why is God healing our hearts? That's what Isaiah 6 and 1 said, that we can be better representation of trees of righteousness. That's what he said. Thank you for the testimony, Ramon. I appreciate that. That was good. <laughs> healing our hearts. Healing our hearts. And the more he heals our hearts, the purer we can see things and the purer we can see others. Talked about love. John 15, verses 12 through 17. These are fruit. Look what he said in verse 12, chapter 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Notice he didn't say you're my servants or my slaves, but my friends. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant know not what his Lord do. But I've called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my Father, I've made known to you. You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Love is the fulfillment of the royal law. Love is the fruit of maturity. When we purpose in our heart that we're going to love, regardless, we're on the road to maturity. We're on the road to maturity because God is love. When a person learns to love, 
they learn the true nature of God. And this is the goal of God for every true believer, that we walk in love. He said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's a sacrifice. Love is sacrificial. Love is not convenient. I used to think that it, 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 it had to be some convenience if I had loved, and any inconvenience was not, it was not love. But you know what? When I saw them nail him to the cross, there was nothing convenient about that, was it? Amen. Nothing but pain. Amen. They spat on him. They put a crown of thorns around his head. They stripped him to an open shame. There was nothing convenient about that. He didn't have to do it. He could have gone back to his glory and said, Father, forget it. I'm not doing this. But he knew that he was going to see you and I as a result of that sacrifice. And when you sacrifice, you don't know who is helping. But I guarantee you, when you make the sacrifice and the commitment to love, God is pleased. So when people talk about the Lord's coming and his wrath, you ain't got to be moved a peg because you have allowed him to make you like him. And so John said in 1 John, we don't have no fear because as he is, so are we. We have become the direct image or the image or the reflection of the God that saved us. Would you bow your heads? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the life of Jesus, for the spirit of God that's in us. Thank you so much that bringing us, for bringing us out of darkness into your holy light. Thank you. We, we, we had nothing that we could add to make this happen. It was grace and mercy. So I just want to thank you for it. Thank you for the friends that we have here today. Thank you for the, the brothers and sisters, Lord. You brought us together. I just want to thank you. Thank you for the love that you've shown to us by ministering to us week after week. I know we don't deserve it, but you did it anyhow. Thank you so much. Lift the burdens and strengthen the hearts today of all your people. Let the word bring life, hope, guidance and direction. A sense of determination. I thank you going to honor you because you've been so good to us. And Lord, as we come around this altar, we ask for strength for every believer. I want you to stand with me and just come around the altar. Give us strength that we know not.